animals around your new place? If there are, I know how to take care of it. <laughs> Federal Wildlife Marshal. Everyone stay cool. Go back to making your adult movie. Basically painted the picture where the hippo was the bad guy and they had to go after him and kill him. I bought into That's that. So they gave him a backstory that he was a fucking bad scene <laughs> and take him out. But I love that they went to the pretense of actually establishing a backstory. I thought that was fantastic. Then they shot him, and I wanted to get a gun and shoot those dicks. Is it the one I was talking about, Dangerous Game? This show is fucking ridiculous. He's like the story of the hippo. I'm not familiar with that story. The hippopotamus, he is not one going, uh, cool bean. I am a hippo. No way, Jose. So he tried to paint the stripe on himself to be like the, uh, the zebra, but he fooled no one. And then he tried to put this spot on his skin to be like the leopard. But everyone knows he is a hippo. So, at a certain point, he uh, looked himself in the mirror and he just said, Hey, I am a hippopotamus and there is nothing I can do about it. And as soon as he accepts this, he lives life happy. Happy as a hippo. You understand? He's, He's just out there swimming in the river, man. And then here's two dudes with khaki pants on. Not even shorts, just pants, just wading into the river with a big old gun. Some people say he's just wading in the river, but some right. other people say he's a menace and he's <laughs> got to be killed. Chris Dorsey is on an adventure in Africa to hunt what many believe to be the most dangerous game animal, the hippo. They even put it on the website, you know what I mean? Well, I think because hippos kill more people, you know, in the wild than most well, but animals. You gotta, be in, you gotta be in the water pretty much. So right. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's not like and killing don't, hunters. Don't we were go making, where the hippos are. Thank you. That's the point we were making before we started. Yes, they're menacing when you're in their home. It's, their, it's The lake is their home, and you just come treading in there, and then you act and like from, hippos wrong. And from what I've seen, too, it's not like hippos are cruising around along in a nice little lagoon where it's all clear water and it's all lush they're out in africa oh, in these rivers that look like they're mud colored you know what i mean like what would you be doing there why why are you even around a hippo well you have to also remember the hippos in an environment with 16 foot crocodiles and lions so it's gotta be a little tough <laughs> yeah oh, I'm, <laughs> or they're I'm sure or it is maybe hippos don't last you know i don't doubt the toughness <laughs> and the dangerous how dangerous a hippo is when you confront it my question is why do you keep confronting it? Right. What are you doing right, there? Right, right. This, this hippo is so dangerous, we have to fight them on their turf. <laughs> it's a right. joy. Yeah. Taking the fight to we them, man. Bring the battle to them. We don't fight on American soil, baby. We come to you. I it's heard there's a breeding pair in Chicago and at the Detroit Zoo and in Dallas. Oh, my God. <laughs> Those are what they call sleeper cells. <laughs> right. Sleeper they got cells, sleeper cells all cells. over the country, man. Fucking they're Waiting disguising to be activated. Suit. Well, sir, I'll be honest with you. I need a large African elephant, and I need it today. But I'm afraid this just isn't what I'm looking for. What do you mean? It's an elephant, isn't it? Well, it is, and it isn't, if you understand what I mean. He likes peanuts. Did you see how that elephant just drops? So it's like it's sad. And it's Pure unbelievable. Well, they just stand there. I mean, they're actually fronting it. You know what I mean? They just get right in front of it and point a yeah. gun at it. The thing's just 15 feet stand. away. Yeah, that kind of freaked me out a little bit. You know, I always assume they take these shots at range. Well, know? the thing is, if you notice that the elephant, they don't like just they'll charge you, but they'll you know they'll show off. They'll, yeah, they'll huff and they'll puff. Yeah, they'll... right. They blow up and the ears are right. out and all that stuff, and they shake their head before they do anything. So they can just sit there and take their sweet time and hit them right between the eyes. That's what they did. I've always dreamed of big game hunting. How about killing an endangered species, like a bald eagle or a giant panda? They're not great white hunters, they're great white killers. That's all <laughs> yeah, right. it is. It's the bloodlust, I agree. Bloodhouse, they didn't you know. kill that elephant for food or for even for, I guess you could call it sport. They were going after the big five, the hippo and the rhino and the elephant. Right. and the Why? Just to say you did it. But the but thing is, even with the big five, it's not like 1920 where some dude, you know, right. is hitching rides with people and walking. And even then, you know, they had the and shirt. And he comes upon an elephant but that's going to kill him. Yes. It's a guy in a pith helmet and like, a pipe. Oh. With a shotgun a, being led by a black guy in a machete, just going into the forest. <laughs> well, 1920. You know, nowadays, it's a guy flying first class, drinking yeah. champagne. Yeah. They're wiping his ass for. I mean, it, it's to the point of so absurd. It's like the big five. The big five. What? You pull well, the trigger. You pull the trigger. Know, exactly. They pull the trigger. They pull that trigger at least five times. My God, you shoot small animals for fun? That's the first indicator of a serial killer, you freak. Well, I've never actually shot a gun. Not a real gun. And I really don't have problems with hunters. You know, I'm not. No, but I don't want the attitude. Do what you want to do. You know what I mean? I'm not telling you don't do it. I just don't really have any respect for it. But I'm not telling you don't do it. Right. On the flip side of that is I don't want Ted Nugent telling me that I, if I don't do it, I'm the one who's wrong. You know? <laughs> right. Fucking Ted Nugent can bite me. I, I've been saying for 20 fucking years now, play your guitar and shut up. You, you know he went fucking bankrupt too, Mr. Conservative, what? whatever. I can't. I never thought there'd be a day when I would turn on Ted Nugent because I love the song so much. I listened to Stranglehold the other day. I haven't heard it in forever. It's like it was new again. I loved it. 
it's, it's and then it's I so heard great. I was listening online to riff back home and because it was the first day of hunting season they were playing Fred Bear with with Ted doing commentary Fred over Bear. top of it like Ted in the studio doing commentary over top <laughs> of the song or whatever and I'm just like okay um, Fred Bear blows it. Why they play Great White Buffalo? Because it was hunting season and that's his hunting song and Fred. Well, it's Great White Buffalo is a good one. I mean, it's, I would agree with you. I like oh, Great White about, Buffalo much better. I, it's a, yeah, so do I. It's I, a struggle when you when you have somebody like that where you really like their music but you really don't like their politics. I you know, I have a, Well, I have you, a, you know, with actors and and musicians and all that, it's almost better not getting to know them because they're almost all douchebags. Yeah, you start right. believing the shit like there's something that they're not and it's like it ruins the you, you know, knowing almost all of them. You could take that theory and apply it to basically the entire human population. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> why bother getting to know these people? Because odds are they're douchebags. I wanted to become him, but it turns out he's a real douche. And there's a cult that could be built around that. The mm-hmm. fuck you cult. You even hate the people in the cult. You don't even talk to them. It's such a loose gathering. We don't even get it. <laughs> Imagine you're a deer. You're prancing along. You get thirsty. You spot a little brook. You put your little dear lips down to the cool, clear water. Bam! A fucking bullet rips off part of your head. Your brains are laying on the ground in little bloody pieces. The, the mighty, mighty deer hunters take to the field. Well, I mean, I don't have a huge problem with the deer. I mean, you can eat them. And no, there's eight, I there's mean, eight and million of them, yeah, too. And everybody I know that is a deer hunter wants to tell me how venison is the greatest thing ever. Yeah, they love it. They do love it. I mean, oh, I they, get it. It's all right. It's, it's just so funny how they're like this little cult. Bon appetit, douchebag. But, you know, I mean, they're really hunting a lot of them. You know, at least a lot of them. They're, they're going out. They're finding their own spot. It, it, at least it's something. Right. They're building their little treehouse. They're waiting for a treehouse. <laughs> their little clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, their little clubhouse. Key man, women haters club. Club. This is gonna be no place for Dave. Now scram! They're only killing one guy once in a while. Like <laughs> in Michigan, it was ridiculous. You know, there was, I mean, opening day, it was. Six, I got the guy seven pointed people. at me. I mean, and I feel no yeah. sympathy for those guys. You know, not that I wish death upon anybody, but it, well, if you're out there with a bunch of other guys running around, you know, <laughs> with guns, you know, I mean, what what do you expect? Now you Lance just, Lance just says, I almost got shot by some motherfucker. I have no sympathy for <laughs> I know. Guys. I was I was sitting ten feet off the road at the crack of dawn, and these guys like, stop. Three guys walk. I, one guy stops and starts lifting his gun up. I had to yell, Hunter, Hunter. And I was like, oh. where, I was wearing bright orange. I wasn't like I had like a tree behind me with antler looking stuff. Apparently, Jet could care less about your life than the life of every other hunter. Do you know how many deer are in the woods right now that tell that exact same story? I was just standing there. Some guy came up and pointed a gun at me. Next thing I thought right. I was dead. I had to go, Deer, deer. But he shot anyway, and I took off. You're the most cold blooded man I've ever known. Why, right. thank you, Doctor. I was pretty ruthless as a little kid, like bloodlust. Like, I, I walked by a tree to where uh, there was one of those little finches, like the black and gold ones, you know, the little cute ones. And I put my 12 gauge shotgun, I was 15 feet away from it, and all you seen was like a couple feathers after. Me and Francisco killed a porcupine out of doing something like that, too, and that was ho- horrific. That was the end of it for me. It was up in a tree, and we were shooting it, it took, and then it came down, and it was crying. Da- our dad was pissed, and we had to finish it off. And I walked away, and he had to do it. Francisco had to finish it off, and that was pretty horrifying. Little kid bloodlust, and I was kind of done. It's kind of funny. It kind of coexisted with smoking. I kind of was, like, done after that. You discovered marijuana and didn't want to kill anything. Anymore. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it kind of went right with that time frame. I mean, it was right around there. Killing's wrong, man, unless you're killing off that beard. Because I know I would have got a deer, and I didn't have a gun because I let one of them use it. One of their guns weren't working. I was ready and pumped and was going to do it, and it's like, oh, I have no Wait gun. A minute. You didn't have a gun. So were you going to knife it? So, me watching, he takes the knife to her, laughing while he does it. He turns to me, and he says, Why so serious? He comes at me with the knife. Why so serious? He sticks the blade in my mouth. Let's put a smile on that face. They go get a hippo, and it's in the water, and they shoot it, and then who, of course, gets it? The five black guys. So they drag it out of the water, that's where we're like, oh, who's going to get it? Of course we know who's going to get it. The five right. black guys are going in the waters to get it. Which we will call Operation Human Shield. Hey, wait a minute. Now, keep in mind, Operation Human Shield will suffer heavy losses. Battalion 14... Right, you are Operation Get Behind the Darkies. Cut a piece off, and they hang it from a, a piece of this hippo, and hang it from a tree. This is how they get a lion now. 
to get a to hang it from a tree to get a line. That's disgusting. Like, but see, again, I'm not I'm not a freak about it either. But what I don't like for is fucking shooting a lion. I mean, what's the well, and, and, for thinking, and thinking you're badass. That try thing is you're a pussy. You're not badass. A badass. It is badass. And they're spending all this money. It's like you're not a badass. You're a fucking geek. We make fun of all these Dungeons and Dragons and all these kids like that. It's like, well, I think that's just the worst, you know? Because that's like the ultimate fantasy if you're a badass when you're not. Thank <laughs> you.